Welcome home. If you are hearing my voice for the very first time, I thank you for joining me. If you are returning, then I thank you for allowing me to serve you. I am Phoenix on purpose. My purpose is to serve and I'd love to show you how. Now have a seat, look around, and like some stuff. But most importantly, stick with me. I am going to teach you a thing or two about a thing or two. This is Purpose, Not Permission, Episode 3. Be you, and be you 100% of the time. The key and the only way to get to know you is to isolate, edify, and evolve. Understand that when you do not know you, you then become a friend of everyone, which makes you an enemy to yourself. Isolate, meaning to silence every single distraction and be extremely intentional about understanding exactly who you are. Edify, learn all about you, who you are and your why. Decide. Decide to evolve. Make an intentional decision to spend time with just you. To work on you so that you then become the absolute best version of yourself. Once you get to this space, understand that this will be a continual process. We are all becoming. We are all going to be in a state of becoming until our demise. Hear me. Now, we are approaching, what, almost 8 billion people in this, in this world, on this planet? I mean, after the, this pandemic of 2020, right? So now is the absolute perfect time to sit with you and get to know you. I'm speaking from personal, very personal experience and from a, um, an extremely vulnerable place. I had to become fed up with me in order to commit to becoming a better me. I had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Hear me very clearly, okay? I was once 288 pounds at my peak weight, 288. That was a size 28, 24 in women, roughly t-shirt size 3x maybe 4x depending on the cut as of today this morning when I weighed in I am 164 pounds a size 4 6 medium size t-shirt understand also that it, it wasn't at all that I didn't know who I was there was never a point where I didn't know who I was I had just gotten lost and I had to make a decision to commit to rediscovering myself. And it was not an easy process. In a later video, I will break down every single thing that I did in order to um, lose the weight, um, what help that I had, what tools that assisted me. But again, just tools. There is no magic, miracle, cure, pill, remedy there's nothing magical and I will break that down in a later video Um, but understand and I said this before that I'm still becoming you're still becoming we're all in a continual state of becoming but I am married to my evolution and I will steamroll over anything or anyone that tries to deliberately derail my process or get in my way of my evolution. I am very specific about my word choice and I am hoping that that was clear. 
See, when we all get to this level of commitment to ourselves, to our personal development, to where we are married to our evolution and there is no divorce, there is no prenup, there is no getting out. You know why? Because you are stuck in your body as you for the rest of eternity. The world that we all occupy becomes that much better when we all commit to looking ourselves in the mirror, right? And being okay with our flaws, but also committing to the things that we can do to become the best version of ourselves. When you get to that space, you no longer have time for anything else. You have no time to mind other people's business. You have no time to make childish and immature judgments about other people. You have no desire nor energy to be envious of other people or try to throw them off their square. You're no longer interested in finessing other people in order to make yourself a living, right? Be you get to a space where you're in an acceptance and a level of intense love for yourself. And it becomes a selfish journey because no one else can do this with you. It's great if you're able to perhaps find an accountability uh, partner. That's 100, that's amazing. I did have a couple accountability, a couple of accountability partners, um, right? But they can't do your work for you. It's still a you journey. Whatever it is that you are doing today, when you get to this space of your becoming and your evolution, you become so engrossed in that And you are then so busy becoming the best version of you that there is absolutely no time to focus on other people. But when you do stop for a moment to look up and you see someone else's progress and you see someone else's evolution, perhaps someone you just weren't able to make time to catch up with or, you know, see on social media or keep up with their life and anything great that's happening in their lives, right? When you do actually stop and you're able to see that, you say to yourself and you say to them, I'm so proud of you. Oh my goodness. Look at you. That's amazing. I'm genuinely happy for you because that's a mirror. That's your mirror engaging you, right? You're so proud of yourself that you can't help but but to be proud of other people. It's like, oh my God, hey, I haven't seen you in so long. What's, oh my goodness, you did what? That's amazing. You decided to take what step with your career? You did um, what in your personal life? Oh my God, oh, you got married? Oh my God, that is amazing. You had another baby? You said you wanted to have another baby. You care to remember the things that people tell you that they're working on and you are happy for them that they're accomplishing those things. Otherwise, right, when that mirror engages you and you're seeing someone else's progress and you're looking at your lack of any evolution or progress in your own life, then the version of you comes out and it's, you know, yeah, oh, Okay, you did what? Oh, mm, okay, yeah, uh huh. I sure wish I could do that. Yeah, I sure that sure looks nice. Yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, uh huh. That sure sounds good. Oh, yeah, really? You did what? Oh, I sure, yeah, but you can make a decision, you can decide to focus on yourself, you can decide to stop 
with binge watching television, right? You can decide to stop um, whatever it is that you are doing in your life that is causing the side effect of you not being able to grow. And when you get here, right, and you really discover you, you rediscover you, you're no longer a people pleaser. You're no longer a fixer of other people's trauma. Once you deal with your own trauma and you go back and you reevaluate your own life and you get professional help in order to do that, And you break down and you work through every aspect of your life that's causing you internal emotional turmoil. Which then causes you to reflect outwardly onto other people that um, those energy vibes that are not so great. Okay. Understand that um, overcompensating shows up as ego when you get to a space where you're actually comfortable with yourself and you accept your flaws and you've forgiven yourself for everything that you thought you never could you know you are able to lay down your ego you're able to humble yourself you're able to see everyone as a human because you understand that you're human I'll discuss ego much more in depth again in a later video. But I will say this right now. If you really think about it and you really, really pay attention to everything that you do and the ways that you react when your ego is engaged, you will understand that your ego only serves one purpose. And that purpose is to mask your insecurities. That's the only thing that your ego exists for. Your ego steps in to save you and to cover for the real you because there's something that you're insecure about or something that is being engaged in that mirror that you're not able to see on that other side. In other words, you're not able to see it within you. Okay? Understand also that when you decide to be you, right, and you learn who you are, you're no longer living in yesteryear. You're no longer living in the old days, your memories. You're no longer scrolling through countless images and and pictures every day in your camera phone and videos of what happened in, in, in 1992, And in 1985, and exactly what happened in 1974, you no longer rely on that every single day as a way to identify yourself. Let me be clear. It is important to reflect on your past in order to propel you forward to your future, right? But you don't live there anymore. You're not dying to um, post memories of of what you used to do and where you used to go and who you used to be associated with so that you can get your throwback Thursday hashtag on you know it's just it's a mindset shift it really is um it just all of that being you right and really learning you and loving you and understanding you It causes such a beautiful, natural, inevitable forward motion. Life's going forward. You know, I talked about this a little in my last video. And you can refer back to it, episode two. Life moves forward. We are always becoming and propelling in a forward, constant motion. Just like water. If you're spending all of your time trying to be someone or something or go back to anything that's no longer you or you're trying to mimic someone other than yourself, 
then you are just communicating to the universe that you don't like yourself. You haven't committed to taking the time to really identify with the beauty of your individuality. We are all unique, beautiful individuals. There are, again, almost 8 billion of us, um, over 7 million or 7 billion of us on this planet. You know, we all have a unique fingerprint. I know you've heard this countless times understand that God made you uniquely beautiful with your own specialness and your own special gifts if you're spending your time not getting to know you and not becoming and working on you you're also telling God that you're ungrateful for creating you And that communicates and manifests an energy into the world of ungratefulness. If you are manifesting ungratefulness, how are you able to manifest an abundant future? It's just not possible. You know, if you are drinking poison, the poison of resentment over other people's accomplishments and wins... How in the world are you able to manifest your own accomplishments and wins? That does nothing for you to hold on to resentment. I forget every single day. I forget. I forget a disagreement I may have had with someone other than to analyze it so that if I'm presented with this situation again, I can make sure that I handle myself in a manner where I am proud of me. Because God knows I have handled myself in situations where I'm being, I guess, um, engaged with an energy that wants to be combative, you know, purposefully combative. And I don't respond well to that type of energy. I don't enjoy arguing at all. You know, it's something that at this point in my life, I've decided that I just won't engage with at all. I don't engage with people's ego and I don't engage with, how do I want to say this? I know this is a long pause. I don't engage with guess projection you know projection of insecurities projection of you see something that's engaging you in a mirror that you don't recognize within yourself so that causes you to become angry you know it causes you it triggers you into a space where um, you feel that the only recourse of action for you is to try to provoke this person out of their space of peace. I I just, I walk away from that, you know, and the winner is always the one who walks away. What you want to be mindful of, right, is that every energy that you outwardly project into the world, into, you know, the universe, people always refer to, The world is the universe, you know. Understand that that energy is just a boomerang. It's going to come right back to you. It's going to manifest in your life. It'll show up in the lives of your loved ones, you know, those closest to you. Um, It shows up in the way that you walk, the way that you carry yourself, you know, the way that you talk, the way that you express yourself. Your body language, you're always communicating to the universe, always. You are a collaborator. The way that you stand tall and hold your shoulders back, no matter whether or not someone else thinks you have reason to stand tall and hold your shoulders back, is irrelevant. You find your reason to stand tall and hold your head high. If you are shuffling and you're hanging your head down 
and you have lack of eye contact with other people, that communicates an energy of self-consciousness and um, lack of self-awareness to the universe. So, you know, you're always communicating and understand that you are a collaborator with anything that you want you know, good to happen for you and in your life. Know also that the most observant people in the world are the ones that hear everything that you don't say. Everything. And that goes far beyond the cliche of reading between the lines. You know, I just had a thought. I had a weird thought. Um... And I'll I'll tell this story now because this is really significant to how I got to the space of becoming sick and tired of being sick and tired and really deciding to get up and figure out who I was and work really, really hard on the things that I did not particularly like about myself. This is when my mother passed, you know, and when she did, I remember several months after, but the year, it was a year, the next year after, I started to um, really travel by myself, by myself. You know, I started to figure out really creative ways because I didn't have a lot of money. You know, I still don't. I started to really research and figure out really creative ways to uh, take a vacation by myself with just me so that I could be in a space of solitude and sit with myself and really get to know who I was and what I liked and go places that I've never been. You know, when she passed away, she was 65 years young. 65. And she was beautiful. You know, people say that I look just like her. And I have several photos of her. Um, Not a ton, but several photos that are posted on my social media. You can go to my Instagram, Purpose Not Permission, and check them out. Um... My mother was beautiful, but she had a lot of dis-ease inside of her. She had a lot of regret over her past. Um, She lived in the past a a lot. You know, my mother was a lot of great things, great things. Let me be clear. But I learn from people's, other people's mistakes. They say that, The smartest people learn from their own mistakes, but wise people learn from the mistakes of others. I think that's how that saying goes. So hear me clearly. I saw that and from conversations that she and I had, countless conversations, my mother lived and died with a lot of regret. Things she had never done, conversations she'd never had, places she'd never gone, Things that she wished that she did, you know, before her time was up. And a lot of these conversations took place when she was in the hospital. She laid in the hospital and I watched her fight for her life um, in a hospital room, bedridden for almost six months. And that is what switched in my mind. And that's where I think I decided to really say, okay, I don't, I can't do that. I don't want to repeat that same cycle. I have to figure out who I am and I have got to get to a place of peace. And there are some things that I have never told anyone, but she and I had a a conversation and it was the first time I'd ever seen her cry. And in that moment, I realized that the way I looked up to her my whole life was um, an example of a strong, um, really just 
go-getter, you know, just really tough, no excuses, figure it out, um, just live life to the fullest because she did do a ton of traveling, you know, but um, she still, you know, she cried for the very first time and I lost it. I couldn't believe it. And she said to me, I want you to make me a promise that you are going to find out how to get happy. She said, you are not happy. And I want you to promise me that you will figure out how to get happy. And I told her that I would. And it took quite some time. Uh, Her anniversary of her passing is actually this year, um, ironically on November 3rd, we all know what that day is, but um, in the hospital, I watched her have surgery after surgery, you know, and she had stroke after stroke. She was really sick with diabetes um, and kidney failure, and they had to put a pacemaker in at one point, and the area where her fistula was, the line kept going down so it had to be moved from artery to artery it eventually wound up in her neck and she kept getting cut on she had an infection in her toe and it spread up her leg and eventually she had to have her leg amputated and that last surgery is what took her well I would say took her out because she survived I think maybe a month or so beyond that She had a really major stroke and that rendered her unable to speak and semi-unconscious. But for some strange reason, I still, because my, you know, throughout her life, I'd witnessed her um, working so hard and neglecting her health and dealing with a lot of her internal upset outwardly in a way that was just extremely unhealthy. And because of all of that, she was in and out of the hospital constantly. And it was it became a normal thing. It became just commonplace, you know, for everyone in my family to witness. It was like, okay, you know, she's in the hospital again. You know, how long is it going to be this day? It might have been a day, sometimes two or three days, sometimes a week. And then she was right back out. For some reason, this time around, even though it was the longest she'd ever been in the hospital, I could not wrap my mind around the fact that she was never going to come out of that hospital and come home again. I could not wrap my mind around it. And I did not accept it until I was finally forced to put her, be patient with me. I was finally forced, you know, it was just, it became too much for the hospital staff and all, you know, they were just tired of dealing with me. You know, I'm telling them, no, there's more you can do. Do something else. You know, nope. Keep giving her dialysis. Do something else. No, you have to do something else because my mom is coming home. She cannot, like, I couldn't wrap my mind around this was going to be it. Every time, you know, my family would sneak her food in the hospital and give her like fried fish and, you know, macaroni and cheese. I'm like, you know, just going at it with them. Why are you feeding her that? You know, that's not helping her. She has to get better. You know, she has to come home. I was hell bent. And um, when she got to hospice, she only lasted have to remember I think at this point I think it was three days it could have been four at the most but I think it was three and um it's it's so ironic I was there to actually hold her hand um and I I felt her turn from warm to cold it's the weirdest thing my nephew is there as well and and he's gone now too my sweet nephew He was a baby. Uh, He was a few weeks shy of turning 18. You know, a baby. 
he just turned 18. You know, in a lot of people's eyes, that's a man, but, you know. But something came up in my spirit, and um, my nephew, we called him Junior. He was home with his mom, and I, I called the house, and I said, you know, Junior, I'm coming to get you. I said, I'm on my way down to the hospice. I said, you haven't been there yet to see, you know, he was away, um, and he hadn't been to see his grandmother in the hospital. And uh, I said, I'm going now, you know, I'm coming to get you. And he said, okay. You know, and I went and got him and I took him down to um, South Street and we got some pizza from one of his favorite places and we went on to the, the hospice. And um, yeah, he and I were there. Wow. But I said all that to say, that wasn't just a story of doom and gloom for no reason. You know, there was a point. I know a lot of you have probably lost um, dear loved ones, parents, you know, perhaps a brother or sister. You know, whether it was unexpected, suddenly, as a result of COVID, you know, maybe you didn't get to say your last words or perhaps you didn't get to hear theirs. But you have to make a decision because they are no longer here. And hopefully they're able to look down on you and see that you're making a decision to move your life forward. No matter what, you're making a decision to get up and wipe your tears and go forward in life. That's what they would have wanted for you. Trust me, your loved ones don't want to see you suffering and sad after they are gone and after there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it. You have to get up. You have to get up and decide to figure out your life, figure out who you are, and be the best version of you. And to my original point, um, when I decided to begin traveling and exploring the world and um, really setting other people and other people's needs aside to deal with me and mine because I matter you know I had someone say to me and this it, it took me by surprise and it it almost still does to this day if I had not gotten to the level of understanding I think that I've gotten to but I had someone say to me, and this is a someone who really knows me. They've known me almost my whole life. Um, I'll call them a childhood friend, a family friend. Um, they know my entire family very well. Um, but this particular individual said to me, I don't understand how you could go to Costa Rica on Thanksgiving by yourself. And this was the year after my mother passed, my first I guess full Thanksgiving of, you know, one whole year. And um, I said to them, everything about my life is different. Everything has changed. Thanksgiving does not have family gatherings, don't have the same meaning that they used to for me anymore. And I don't want to be reminded of I'm at a family gathering. And all my other cousins have their mother, but mine isn't there. And my mother was the one who came in and took the photos. And my mother was the one who came in and, you know, made us all laugh. Or maybe she said something obnoxious and caused a ruckus. I did not want to deal with that. I didn't have a normal anymore. So I had to create my own new normal. And that was intentional. And I think that some of the strongest people in this world make a decision to isolate themselves and deal with their stuff. We all have stuff. We all have mess. We all have a story. We all have embarrassments. We all have things that we perhaps haven't forgiven ourselves for. We all have what we call mistakes that we've made in our life. I call them learning lessons. There are things that we all 
may or may not want to face, but it still makes us who we are. And if you decide to deal with and figure all of that out over in a corner somewhere where you are not disturbing the rest of society while you're figuring yourself out, I think those are some of the strongest people that I I, I have high admiration for. I really hold them um, near and dear, you know, as if I know them. And I'm speaking of individuals that I can view through, you know, perhaps an interview or a podcast, you know, because I don't watch reality television. I really don't watch a ton of television at all, to be honest. I don't mind a good movie every now and again. I need my um, decompression, decompress um, things that I like to do for myself. My my go-to is music. You know, I love all music, all different gospel, rap, hip hop, R and B, jazz. You know, heavy metal, some of every genre of of music. Um, I've grown up on that since the 80s. That's always been like my safe space, or I call it the soundtrack of my life. You know, but um, I don't watch a ton of TV. I really don't. It's a decision that I made, you know, years ago. It's just I I can't find myself in the television. And a lot of times I don't particularly care for the images that are reflected back to me on TV because I don't identify with that at all. It's just a choice that I've made for me, you know. Um, So, yeah, but when I am watching an interview or hearing someone else's story of strength or triumph of, you know, falling down seven times but getting back up eight, I'm in awe of that. that. That's like, man, that's incredible. I love it. It's amazing. It's so amazing and it's beautiful to witness You know, that takes strength. It really does. We all have a story. I said that. We all have our stuff that we've gone through, but you just have to decide, number one, that you aren't going to be embarrassed about your story anymore because I guarantee you something that you've gone through, experienced, something that you've done, something that you've thought, something that you've done, someone else has done the exact same thing. I know that there are some of you out there right now listening to me and you have a very similar story. Maybe you got up, maybe you weren't able to. Leave a comment below. Let me know where you are on your journey. Tell me about your stories. I want to hear them. Send me an email. Send me a DM. I read them. I don't always have time to respond, but I do read them. I don't always have time to respond to my email, but I do read them. I see them. I respond to genuine people. I respond to someone who isn't trying to finesse me, okay, or sell me on something. I'm not the girl that you can sell. I know exactly what it is that I want. I know exactly what it is that I aspire Um, where I aspire to be in life. I know what I'm working towards. Yes, I'm open to a detour from God. If it's his ordained detour, I'm open to that. You can't sell me on anything. You cannot dangle a dollar in my face. You cannot dangle uh, a, a false promise of an opportunity in my face and wave it like a red flag and try to get my attention it's not happening so please move along okay leave me your comments below let me know about your journey let me know whether or not this story resonated with you let me know if you are on a path to finding your strength tell me about some of the things you want to hear or specific details that I did not get into and that perhaps I did not refer to, um, you know, that I'll be willing to discuss in a later video. In the meantime, that's all for this episode. I thank you for listening. Remember my key principles, love, travel, and manifest.